All right, so we're going to look at a limits flowchart that will help you know and maybe help you uh, structure your way through limits when you see certain things. If you need a copy for yourself, if you want to print one and fill it out for yourself, you can go to bit.ly slash limit flow and you can print your own flowchart there and fill it in. So in the world of limits, there are, in my mind, two main categories. One is where limit is approaching positive or negative infinity, and the other one is where um, x is approaching a constant, um, and I'll just say c equals some constant, some finite number. And, um, and so over here, if you're looking at x approaching positive or negative infinity, those limits are really asking you to consider the end behavior. What's happening way off on the extreme right and what's happening way off on the extreme left. And those are often described with horizontal asymptotes if those do exist. If a horizontal asymptote does not exist, then as you go forever to the left or forever to the right, your function is either increasing or decreasing uh, or going towards infinity or negative infinity uh, would be a better way of saying that. So if you, have a, uh, if you have a function that is a fraction of two polynomials, that's when you consider the top and bottom degrees. And there are three cases of top and bottom degrees, depending on whether they're equal, if top's bigger or bottom's bigger. And in each of those cases, so if the top is equal to the bottom, you could find the answer to x approaching positive or negative infinity by dividing the leading coefficients. So you would divide the coefficients to find the horizontal asymptote or the end behavior. So coefficients, there we go. Um, if the bottom is bigger than the top, then the answer is zero. Um, that one's the easiest. I'll write the words here. Uh, I'll write equals zero. There we are. All right, so if the bottom is bigger than the top, if the bottom degree is bigger, the answer is zero. If the top is bigger than the bottom, then the limit does not exist. And that is an acceptable answer. However, if the limit does not exist, that means there is not a horizontal asymptote, which means as you go forever to the right or forever to the left, your function will be always going up towards infinity or it will be going down towards negative infinity. And so in this case, many teachers, myself included, would like for you to specify the nature of the non-existence um, with infinity or negative infinity. Uh, now, those are the shortcut methods where you can look at the degree on top and bottom. Uh, the catch-all method, if you don't like memorizing those three rules, the other method, I'll just write or, or you can divide every term in the fraction. And this only works if you have a fraction with variables in numerator and denominator. So you divide every term in the fraction by the highest power of x in the denominator and simplify that and clean it up and that will always give you the right answer regardless of the degree situation by highest power of x in bottom. Okay, so that's if x is approaching infinity. The other types of limits that we could be looking at is when x is approaching a finite number and your first step every time you're approaching a finite number, even if you're coming in from the left or the right side, you always substitute, I'm going to say plug in, it's a lot easier to say that, you're, you always plug in x equals c to the function for the limit that you're evaluating. So when you plug in x equals c, if you're really, really lucky, and this is super rare, but if you're really lucky, then you just get your answer. Okay, so you get a real number answer that is ultra rare, but sometimes you plug in x equals 7 and you get an answer of 1 half, and that's your answer. So sometimes you get a real number answer, and in that case, you are done, and that is the answer to the question. More often than not, you're going to get some type of indeterminate form, um, and the most common indeterminate form I'm going to say is 0 divided by 0 because that is the end result of all limit derivative setups. You'll get uh, 0 divided by 0. Um, and the third option is a number divided by 0. So you've got the number divided by 0. That could mean something else. Now, those of you who know your calculus, you may realize that I'm leaving out the infinity divided by infinity option. Um, that is later on with L'Hopital's rule. This flowchart is really describing limits from an algebraic standpoint, um, the early part of limits, not getting back into L'Hopital's rule and some of the more um, advanced approaches to solving limits. I'm looking strictly at the algebraic approaches. So if you get 0 divided by 0, that is called indeterminate. 
can determine it. And indeterminate, when you are doing algebra to solve a limit, indeterminate means something will cancel. So you're going to do some level of algebra to cancel something. Um, you will absolutely have to do more work. So if you get an indeterminate form, you have to do more work. Something's going to cancel. Uh, zero to five by zero, you cannot get the answer just by looking at that. And so the methods we have for canceling is you can factor. So you can factor and cancel. You can use conjugates. So if you see a square root in the problem, you can use conjugates to rationalize either numerator or denominator and hope that something cancels that way. Um, if it's a polynomial and you have something on, like a polynomial on top and a polynomial on bottom, you could do long division, long or synthetic division. Uh, synthetic does not have an M. Um, if those don't work, I'm going to throw in just this catch-all. It's kind of a generic phrase, but sometimes you just do some other type of algebra. Sometimes it's fully expanding stuff. Sometimes it's dealing with common denominators, but I'm just going to throw in a, this catch-all generic other algebra. And for the sake of having a complete list, I'm going to throw in L'Hopital's rule at the bottom, which is a method of using derivatives within the limit to evaluate the limit. And honestly, L'Hopital's rule is the nicest approach of them all, uh, but I'm not going to get into L'Hopital's rule in detail here because I'm looking more at the algebraic approaches to solving limits, not the L'Hopital's rule. And then our final option over here, when you have a number divided by zero, what that means is there is a vertical asymptote at x equals c. And so your answers are, sometimes the best you can do is that the limit is non-existent. However, at a vertical asymptote, both sides could be going up, both sides could be going down. So the answer could be infinity or negative infinity. And if it's a one-sided limit and you're only looking at the left or you're only looking at the right, I like you to always specify with positive or negative infinity at the presence of an asymptote. And so to determine whether it is straight up non-existent, maybe on both sides of the asymptote, your function is going in different directions, or if it's positive or negative infinity, we are going to plug in a number just to the left and or right of x equals c. to determine if our answer is positive infinity, negative infinity, or D and E. So if you plug in a number just to the left and you end up with a positive result, that means the left side is going towards positive infinity. If you plug in a number to the right and you get a positive result, that means the right side is going to positive infinity. If both sides are going to in the same direction, then you could say the overall limit is whatever that, you get positive or negative infinity. And that is my flow chart for how to approach limits, all the different cases that you could run into. Um, again, I left out L'Hopital's rules, so, so it's not 100% complete, and I'm sure some math professor out there is looking at this and saying this whole thing sucks. But hey, it works for me, and it works for my students, and hopefully you can get some use out of it as well.